Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, or Sarah, as I like to call myself. Oh. I'm a right. senior FinOps analyst in Atlassian. Don't worry, GR, I don't mind Sarah as well. Uh, both work. Um, I'm a senior FinOps analyst in Atlassian. Um, today, I'll be talking about my FinOps journey, or what I would like to call my crawl, walk, run story in FinOps. Um, and in telling my story, I'll also be telling the story of how we do FinOps in Atlassian, which I think is something that might be interesting for people of how we do things in Atlassian and how working with Mike Fuller feels like. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Cool. So for me, it uh, all started in July 2020 when I came across a role on LinkedIn about what I thought is a tech BA role in Dara. And then through the interview process, I realized it's a role in FinOps team. And of course, the first thought was, what the hell is FinOps? I haven't heard the term before. Um, and for the next two months, I spent some time knowing about the cloud. Of course, I had general knowledge of the cloud, but um, I spent some time learning about the cloud, learning about FinOps, read the FinOps book, which is, I think, is a message for anyone here uh, who, have, like, who have no experience with FinOps or cloud. Rest assured, you're not alone. I was in the same position two years ago. And then um, after two months, I ended up uh, joining Atlassian in September 2020 as the first hire in the dedicated team. And to clarify, Atlassian already had Mike, who's been working in FinOps for a while, uh, working along with another analyst. They established the pipeline. They had some reserved instances and saving plans, but they were not a dedicated FinOps team. They were doing this as part of the cloud engineering team. So when I actually joined, I joined Mike and the other analysts and the shared manager between cloud engineering and FinOps as the first hire. So as I hit the ground running, I spent the first few weeks getting my head around the acronyms and uh, the complexity of our bill, like fully loaded cost, on-demand, reserved instances, where to find this information, uh, the size and the complexity of our bill. And of course, my head was spinning for the first few weeks. And then um, once I get some momentum, I start working on the usage optimization. Of course, there is no better way of saving money than actually turning off things we don't use. Um, so in Atlassian, we actually do use AWS um, recommendations of the low-utilized resources. We enrich this with some data from the cost usage report, and we make this available for the engineers and uh, the services teams to know their waste and provide this as like potential waste recommendations. Uh, once I started doing this, I came across the first challenge, and I think it's a global challenge in FinOps world, which is uh, getting engineers to action teams. So uh, we thought of like different ways to go around this. And one of the workarounds we've, that we've had is that we started presenting in a weekly forum, operational forum we have in Atlassian Cold World, where it has the head of departments, the cost center owners, the engineering managers, et cetera. We started to have a weekly FinOps update where we actually call out the top 10 business units in potential waste, um, in usage optimization opportunities. We kind of tell them, you're the top 10, go action these. And we show them the reports and data where they need to look at to action things. And this actually got us some attention and got some things moving in Atlassian around um, cost, uh, cloud cost, waste, and um, kind of cost awareness. So we started to get some visibility and awareness inside Atlassian. And then um, the next step was working with the finance. So any FinOps practitioner knows that the core job is just to lace between finance, engineering products, and different teams. So I started working with the finance on a data set that was only available for um, the head of the engine, like the head of the head of teams and the cost centers owner, which is the budget and forecast data. So for everyone's benefit in Atlassian, we do actually have a budget uh, for the cloud cost and the cloud spend for every division. But this data was only in the planning tool, only accessible for the head of departments. So we work with the finance to make this data available in our data leak and available in our FinOps reports, which we think it was a key factor in the change of the mindsets in Atlassian. Once you make engineers aware, they start to be accountable and making people accountable for the cloud usage is like the first FinOps concept. So we started to make people more aware, more engaged with their division. So they became kind of more cost conscious. Um, and then I moved to the other pillar of cost optimization, which is rate optimization. So we started to put more uh, effort and time into our uh, saving plans and rate optimization, which is I think it ties back to the slide that JR just shared of what's the benchmark, what's the standard. So in, in Atlassian, we followed the industry benchmark of 80%, but we didn't have 80% coverage in all of our products. So we start to put more momentum in this, and it was actually very good to start to see the financial benefits of optimizing the rates 
um, in Atlassian, for everyone's benefit, we do follow a hybrid model. Like we drive, we as FinOps, we drive the rate optimization, but we don't buy without the consent of teams just to make sure they'll be using the same services in product for 12 months. We avoid any waste on this. So we came up with the data, we reach out to the owners, uh, we drive it, but we don't buy without their consent. Um, and then in June 2021, uh, we had the FinOps team forming. So a um, few weeks after I joined, uh, another data engineer joined. So it was Mike as the cloud engineer, uh, me as the analyst and another analyst, and then the data engineer joined. But unfortunately, the other analyst left a few months after I joined. So in June 2021, we had the other analyst, and we also had a dedicated manager for the team. So our FinOps team started to form. We started to have the perfect team of like cloud engineer, data engineer, to analysts, and a manager working on everything FinOps in Atlassian. Of course, we've done a lot of things, but I'm just taking you through the milestones. And then we had an incident of where a service bug was costing thousands of dollars, um, and no one even noticed. And by the time we noticed, I think it cost us over 100K or something. But then it raised the question from our end around anomaly detection. So we started to use AWS forecast to build anomaly detection alerts for us as a team, as FinOps. And then um, we started thinking, okay, why don't we make this visible to the teams? So we have another ritual in Atlassian called TechOps, which is basically operational on-demand reports that the team run for a lot of operational metric. We have already cost module introduced as part of this operational report. We included in it, um, kind of warning alerts for anomaly. If your service overspent, we give you warning, your, your service overspent, go check the service spent and we give you links for reports. And then as Atlassian was going through growth phase, we started thinking of embedding an early FinOps culture in Atlassian. So all what we're doing was good. We were getting um, attention, we were getting people to action things, but we, th we wanted to be more proactive in setting a FinOps culture within Atlassian from the very beginning especially with the amount of new joiners joining us. So the team came together. We started to form something we call FinOps 101 training. Um, we put the curriculum together. We thought of making three, four minutes video about each topic, uh, which I'll share in the next slide. But we started to put three, four minutes videos of different topics of what we want engineers and new joiners to know generally about FinOps and Atlassian and how we do things. Um, we recorded the videos ourselves. Each one of us recorded a few videos and we actually enrolled this in the onboarding pack for the new joiners. So we have this as part of the onboarding experience. Um, we've actually done a lot of things, but this is in a nutshell our like highlights of the journey of my FinOps, the FinOps team journey and everything. And uh, here I am. I'm not sure if we're ready to go to the next slide, Joe, or we want to take any questions now. You let me know. Well, well Sarah, what was like, I love the view of this because it's all twisty turny, which is exactly like almost everyone's FinOps uh, journey. What what was your what was just real quick? What was your favorite part and what was the most challenging part so far? Um, I think let me start with challenging, just because I like to leave the best for the last. Uh, the challenging part was to get engineers to action things, especially given the value. So sometimes you can have a waste or something that is probably costing you ten dollars. So the engineer look at it as like, no, it's not worth my time. However, you have millions of these, which end up being ten million dollars a month. But getting engineers to kind of do the link between their small pieces of work and how they all sum up together was challenging, uh, especially that you you as a FinOps person, you look at this and go like, oh my God, this is 100K a month. But yet the engineer is looking at it, it's like, ah, that's 50 bucks a month. It's probably not worth my time. So the question between value and um, cost and how this can be like a small value for a person, but it ends up being a bigger cost and getting engineers to action this low value things was one of the challenging parts. Uh, the good part about it is I think the where you actually reap the fruits of what you've done. So for example, when we focused on the rate optimization, focused on the usage optimization, we really did put a lot of conscious effort. We ended up achieving our saving OKR, which is another, I'd probably say a good practice from Atlassian is that we have a saving OKR every year. We set for ourselves, for the team, and we track it every month. So we were able to actually exceed that saving OKR once we put the right momentum and effort into the right streams. And it was actually very rewarding, I would say. I'm getting lots of great questions in the chat, but I'm thinking we're gonna save some of them for the, for the end so we can get some yeah, time. Happy to answer all of them in the AME part. Yep, uh, don't worry, I'll answer all the questions. Perfect. We'll <laughs> Absolutely. Cool.
Sarah, cool. uh, I believe on the next slide, yeah, you had a little because you got you were talking about the FinOps one on one training. Can you share a little bit more what that sure. what that's like? Sure. So we put the structure of the training ourselves on what we want teams or new joiners to pay attention to. So we started with a quick intro to the course, a quick intro to the cloud, and then we started with a high level introduction to FinOps. What's FinOps? We actually referenced the FinOps Foundation video on the website. Uh, we talked a little bit about FinOps Foundation. We talked about our team and us in what we do and how to reach out to us for help and where to find different things related to us, documentations and things. And then we start talking about how cloud spend work, the cloud charging model, uh, our monthly bill, the size and the materiality, complexity of the bill, cost allocations, how they work, uh, cost centers data. We also talked about discounts and FinOps report. We have a whole page of like reports and dashboards. We refer to it. We kind of show different reports and dashboards. And then we start talking about the basic expectations from the engineers, which is the more education piece of what we expect them to do going forward of like tagging, keeping good tagging hygiene, the rituals like world and tech ops that I mentioned, um, tips for cost optimization and what to do for cost optimization, talking about uh, both rate and usage optimization, and also some cloud spend awareness. This is basically the structure. Every topic of these had about three, four minutes video. It's like in total, I think it was 45 minutes training, which is very doable, especially when you split it into multiple or small um, videos. So that's the training structure. Awesome. And then I think I also asked you, uh, when, when we were working with Michelle on presentations, it'd be awesome to show your engagement journey with the community because definitely one, one, of my, uh, one of my pet projects is trying to figure out how to drive engagement in every region around the globe. So Juan, you, if you could share your story on uh, being engaged with the community. Uh, you... Sure. Uh, I would love to, and if we can move to the next slide, please. I just had it as a sort of like a quick yeah. timeline for everyone. So I actually joined the foundation in October 2020. Uh, of course, I had no idea about the foundation. It was all Mike. So thank you, Mike. Um, so I joined the FinOps Foundation in 2020. And then I took the course of the FinOps practitioner course in December 2020, which was almost two, three months after I joined that last year. It was very informative. It was very good. And um, it felt beneficial because I was doing actually things on hand, so kind of hands-on. So it was um, it was good. And then I started to get more involved with the foundations through the Slack community. So following the questions, the the questions on different channels, especially the, the ones about optimizations or so, or the questions channel. And then I decided to be a FinOps practitioner. In my defense, I took the certificate before Mike, so it's good. Um, so I decided it's about time to get the certificate. So I self-studied, I revised the course materials and I became a certified FinOps practitioner before Mike. And then um, again, I was doing uh, more work through the foundation. And then um, I was wondering if we can connect with more uh, fellow, like more FinOps people in the region. Um, and I asked Mike and there was no meetups or no, I would probably say forum in the region, especially with the 4 a.m. and 3 a.m. calls of the foundation. So uh, I reached out to Joe Daly asking if we can start a Sydney FinOps meetup. And I think it came at a good time because Joe himself was looking at ideas of starting Sydney FinOps meetup. And I think anyone who wants to start meetup, regional meetup, please reach out to Joe. Uh, it's very easy to get you started. He provided all the materials, um, templates, ideas, uh, thoughts from people who organized meetups before it was very good like I had very good materials to start on the meetups and don't be shy and don't be afraid to start meetups in your regions and then uh, yeah um, thanks to my contribution which I don't think they were a lot of contribution I was selected as a FinOps ambassador in the region um, and yeah here I am so it's not really hard to contribute to the community it's not very you don't have to take big steps, but I think uh, if you reach out to Joe, you'll find the, the right support to start the meetups in your region. And that's it. That's my journey in a nutshell. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to FinOps.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.